Well, when I take a trip, I, I, I used to travel a lot. And I would go to Africa and, and um, I would go to various projects. There was always a lot of people that had projects that want me to see them. And oftentimes I would go there and walk through and see it. And then I'd sit down with kind of the, the village elders, you know. We'd sit under a tree and, and I would just listen to them talk. I always had an interpreter. And they would talk and tell me some of the things that they were wrestling with and what the problems were and, you know, that there was always some, I would always, sometimes there would be an issue in which, you know, there were common issues among countries, you know, or the, but sometimes maybe this particular village had a real problem that really needed a special, a special hand or something like that. And uh, maybe I could come back, and I knew all the nonprofit organizations, and I could, I could, without even going to my constituents or going to the government, I could call up a friend in World Vision and say, "Look, you've," or I, I have a good friend in South Africa that's got a, he, he drills water, he drills for water, so I, I got a village I want you to go into. Would you think about it? And he. He said, well, it's going to cost some money. And I said, well, why don't you go ask for money for AID and send me your bid. And I'll, not your bid, but if you're going to contract with him, I'll, I'll try to put a good word in for you because I've been to the village and I'll, I'll tell him you need this. And so, you know, I would do it that way. I wouldn't always go to my district because, you know, it, it was a local thing. But if it was a thing like Ethiopia where a million people had died. That was a very easy thing to do because I would come home and I would give a report. And I, since I was the first uh, person, the first congressman to go to Ethiopia during those days, when I came home, uh, there, you know, the press was so eager to report it that they reported it widely. And I was able to tell them what I had seen and what they needed. And, and, and we were able to rush a lot of aid in there very quickly. We were able to put a lot of food in there, a lot of medicines, a lot of blankets, a lot of NGOs really got geared up. And um, I was able also to go back and uh, get my district geared up. You know, it was a way for me to bring my district into it. And we did a, we did a 40 hour fast. Uh, in my district, and this, this was something I, bor I borrowed from another NGO. So we started a fast on Friday night, went till Sunday at noon, and for every hour you would fast, you would go out and, and, and raise money in your, in your area. And I got big business corporations to back me, and students would get their, their parents or moms and dads to back them. And, and then we had all kinds of people. And, and then I brought a bunch of ambassadors, ambassadors in from the countries that were affected by the famine uh, that surrounded Ethiopia. And uh, we had a series of lectures and we had, then people would come in and sell their wares from those places. We had, a, we had fun, I mean, we had, you know, but we, it wasn't a fast in that it was strictly water. The, you could drink fruit juices if you wanted. But we didn't eat for 40 hours. We raised almost $300,000 over the weekend. Half of which, half of which went overseas. And if you wanted it, if you you know you told us, well, I want this to go to the Jewish Relief Group. Fine. I want it to go to the Baptist. Okay. So we'd give it to whoever you wanted to go to. The other half stayed in my district and went to the 66 food banks. So we were help, able to help through the famine in Ethiopia, domestic and international. So it depends on the situation, and each village, each country was unique and different. But it was, if it was a big famine and it, it affected many countries, I would just report back to Congress, and I would uh, push through legislation if I could for more money, more food, more medicines. 